So uh, it is the morning of Saturday, April the 2nd, and we are headed to get on the Carnival Cruise Mardi Gras. So we're headed to where, Cozumel? Yes. And? Costa Maya and Roatan. So seven days, and um, apparently we're going to get to um, look around, uh, whatever, some uh, Mayan ruins. So that's pretty exciting. You excited about that? I am. Is that not what we're doing? We are. Okay. You look like you're looking at me like you don't know what you're talking about. We're just late. I want to get going. Okay. When Miss Dizzy speaks. <laughs> little bit of uh, 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 information for you guys uh, in regards at least with carnival if you have your your luggage tags already printed and always re already already ready but then you end up with extra bags like one just be aware they do not have generic tags for you to fill out on your own and they're just going to tear the other ones in half apparently both halves have the information on it they're going to tear those in half to uh to use on the other bags just so you know that, um, and don't kind of get blindsided by it when you come uh, pull up. And here's my other tip. So use one of these like um, zippered poly bags here to keep all of your important information in and keep it handy and all together. Sometimes people, I see people using the folders and things tend to fall out of those. This keeps it all nice and neat um, and together. So there's my boarding pass, our boarding passes. And I've got everything we need, including our mask in here for when we get out because you still do have to wear them right now getting on and off the ship. So, I um, have everything we need in here. All right, so, wasn't, wasn't too bad getting through security and uh, getting getting checked in, I'd say about 15 minutes, 20 from minutes maybe, the car, yeah. from the time we left the car. So, not bad at all. Not bad in the least. So, we're ready to get on board. Let's do it. Here we go now. thing we get to do take off these masks Yay! I don't know I should probably put mine back on but. all right so we just got into our room give you a quick tour you see do we have some lights over here there we go oh yeah that'll help that helps out a ton so That's safe, all your typical stuff. I don't know why I feel like even showing all this, but you know, Tim Tracker does it, so I feel like I'm supposed to. And of course, just as you walk in the room to the right, immediate right, is the bathroom. Let's hear all the oohs and ahs. mini fridge down there we'll just go ahead and throw those away <laughs> all 
nice of them to give us a bunch of water. Now we get out to the balcony. Ah, so tell us about. This is a Havana Cabana. Um, so it is a special section on the ship, a special category that you can book, and it has these extended balconies with the loungers and the swing chair. Um, and some of the rooms also have these uh, loungers out here. You know, what you do give up is you don't have a, you're not directly, your balcony isn't directly on the water. This is considered like public to the Havana Cabana access, uh, those rooms. So anybody who's in the Havana Cabana section can just like walk through here. Um, but, um, and then other people, I think during the day, because um, the Havana Cabana is like, restricted after 4 p.m. I believe it is to those 16 and older and who are in the Havana Cabana section so yeah but uh, hopefully on our sea days we'll have better weather than this and we will be able to enjoy take advantage of these loungers here and get some kind of shady sun and enjoy the view of the water and I'm going to figure out how to open this maybe Brent can because apparently Stupid. Pull out the hammer. Because <laughs> it's not opening for me. I feel like this should pull up or something, but I don't know what we're doing. Oh. It's well, called I, muscles. I tried that, but it didn't work for me going down there. Oh, you're an aft woman, huh? <laughs> when it comes to ships, I like the aft. <clears throat> All right, here we are going out on uh, deck 16 up to the uh, Red Frog Brewery. So we're going to do a little bit of kind of a late lunch, I guess. Uh, we're here at the uh, Pig and Anchor, which is uh, Guy Fieri. You know what? I've always had a problem with it. I've heard a lot of people pronounce it Fieri, even though there's not a D in there. And I've heard other pe people pronounce it Fieri. So I really don't know which one is proper. But anyway, um, so we're giving this a try. Um, we'll see. I think I'm going to jump in on some of this uh, sriracha, sweet and spicy barbecue sauce give that a shot let you know what we think of it all right so just getting started uh, uh, on, on it all looks great um, so I did actually already eat the uh, collards which were phenomenal uh, quite honestly short of the collards my uh, grandmother uh, and my wife <clears throat> have made for me. I've never made collard greens. Not one. Okay, well, good. I wanted to make sure. 
uh, but the collards my uh, my my grandmother Pendrack used to make for me. These are these are phenomenal, honestly. See these beans. The macaroni and cheese leaves something to be desired. Mac and cheese isn't good. It's kind of flavorless. So are the beans. I don't even remember what the beans, the way they had them uh, listed. I have to go back and look how they had them, li had them listed, but like maple something, I, I want to say, and no, no, not impressed. Not impressed on that. Let's jump over to these, uh, this mac and cheese that Melanie already said is not so good. And she's right. <laughs> Um, so, so, so far the collards are a winner. The pork is good. Is it? Pork. Mm -hmm. And you know what else? The number one thing for Melanie, hey, I don't know if you can see this. Nugget ice. Nugget ice. I'm pouring it out. But they have the nugget ice. So that's so far we got collards, the nugget ice. She's saying the pork. I've not had it yet, but I'm saving that to last. So yeah, no, the, the macaroni and cheese is really bland. Um, the beans are very no disappointing. Flavor. Yeah. Not at all. It's like a watered down box mac and cheese. Yeah, it really does. It's like Velveeta. Mac and cheese, mac, well, it's mac and shells, but Velveeta it's not even with as water. As that. Right, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's watered down. Guy Fieri, Guy Fieri, whatever your name is, you ought to like complain because yeah, your is name not, is behind that. This ain't Flavor Town. The pork is good. Or it's, it's the back alley in Flavor Town, is what it is. The pork is good. We tried the sausage. I mean, it's not as good as your pulled pork. That you grow up. <clears throat> My dirty honey special pulled pork. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Yeah, the sausage is actually pretty good. Got a good spice to it that I like. Probably a little spicier than than, than you'd like, Melanie, but got a good spice to it. Let's see. The pulled pork's, yeah, pulled pork's pretty good. Um, now I know how this will sound. I'm not the type to always say my pulled pork is better, but I do think my pulled pork is better um, in this case. Um, of course, I like really, really smoky uh, pulled pork. Really, everything I do on the grill, I like it really, really smoky. This doesn't really have any smoke to it. Mm. And the bread is stale. Mm. Really? Yeah. And the bread's... I don't want to say stale, but it's, um, I mean, it's obviously been sitting out. It's crusty. Yeah, well, crusty is one thing. It's been so, sitting out. Yeah, it's been sitting out, so it's not It's not fresh. Not their fault, really. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, the pork's pretty good, but guy, give me a call. i give me, give you my recipe, guarantee you. So, we're going to end up going for round number two. Uh, basically, not impressed with uh, Guy's uh, barbecue place down there. So we're going to actually go through the actual uh, buffet here. We'll see what we think of this one. So a pretty good salad spread. It's okay.
Ah, shawarma. I'll be spending some time over there. And gelato. I'll be spending some time over there. At beer station, I'll be spending some time right there. Okay, so we made our way over to the uh, actual buffet to uh, give it a, you know, give everything a try. Because honestly, pretty disappointed in uh, Guy's uh, restaurant over there. So Melanie, of course, got a uh, got a nice salad. They actually a decent selection of salad toppings. I think she was a little disappointed in it. A little underwhelmed. You're used to that, though. <laughs> and they only have a couple of dressing types. It's like your basic Italian ranch and blue cheese and maybe French. They didn't have, like, a large fry. Um, yeah. So, uh, the, I will say that the mac and cheese over here looks it a look heck of a lot we'll better. We'll um, actually has cheese on the top, so, you know, um, that's, a, that's a good start. Um, and, you know, you see kind of what I grabbed here. Um, give it a shot, and then instead of me sitting here in this, at this small table trying to film while I eat, uh, we'll kind of give you a recap at the end there. So, not wanting to be negative, wasn't really impressed with, uh, with any of the food um, over here. <clears throat> I will admit the macaroni and cheese is better than over at Guy's. A good bit better. Yeah. But Still not great. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You We're used to southern macaroni and cheese. Like, yeah, this it's was the bomb. This was the, uh, an attempt, I think, at being being southern. It was basically it just still lacked a little bit of flavor. I think it was a uh, Velveeta, Velveeta, not watered brown. down, not, yeah, not watered, watered down like it was over there, but with actual cheese melted on top. So that was their attempt at southern. Um, the rest this, of it, I just wasn't, I wasn't impressed with. I felt like the salad bar, the salad foods were not kept as cold as they probably should have been. Just gonna say, it was a little sketchy. The potatoes were good, the roasted potatoes, hard roasted to mess up. The potatoes were pretty you good. said the broccoli was so The broccoli good. was good, it was actually not overcooked and, and limp and uh, whatever. You had um, some ribs and some turkey or something? I did, I don't even know what the, exactly that turkey thing was, to be honest with you, it didn't have a... They were cutting it, but it didn't have a um, label up there, so I don't even know what it was. It was dry. Um, the ribs were don't even know what to say about the ribs. They were okay. They weren't <laughs> like barbecue ribs. It was almost like it was a tomato. It's almost like Italian ribs, to be honest with you. If that makes any sense, I don't know. Don't know what it was. Very strange. They weren't terrible. Um, so far, the best thing I've had are the collards. The collards were damn good. Um, desserts were missed. We kind of had I heard that yeah. from the buffet. The desserts. I just are we. I just walked through and grabbed uh, two small cookies. And no, not good. And I love peanut butter. And they were salted peanut butter cookies. No. Um, also, the beer stations at here at the buffet, there's some problems going on with those. You were saying they're like all foam or they're well, out there was, of them. Yeah, so they have these neat, it's a neat concept, the beer stations where you swipe your card um, on the uh, little reader and you can, it, it lets you pour, I think, 12 ounces or 14 ounces. Um, <clears throat> and it gives you, now I guess this is the, the thing that's kind of a problem. You have, I think, about six or eight seconds, something like that, to complete your pour, and then it cuts it off, and you're charged for it, either to towards your drink package or 
um, you know, to your room. Here's the thing. The first one was out. The first one was out, completely out. Nothing came out. And then the second one was pouring completely foam. So I saw several people who went up there and there they just kept trying and kept trying and you know pouring pouring out and you just getting more and more foam. So I'm assuming that in the end they got charged. It would have been one of the so you with the the cheers package each person gets up to, who has the package, gets up to 15 alcoholic beverages per day in a 20, it's like 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. I think it is. So it would have counted as one of those. Right. I mean, I think you probably can make a case for going to guest services and having them remove one if you took it to them and showed them, but that's a lot of work and a lot of time <laughs> to deal with that. I mean. Probably most people aren't drinking 15 alcoholic beverages in a day, hope hopefully not. not. So um, it's probably not that big of a deal, but it's frustrating, I guess, especially, you know, when you were looking forward to having a beer with your lunch and there's not really any around yeah. here at the buffet because of those being out. And so. there's no attendance. Uh, there's no attendance over there to uh, help. To help. Um, we also so we went over to the um, soda fountain soda station and honestly same thing I think I tried three different items that were were out uh, before I found one that that, um, that they actually you know had soda in it so I almost now I'm that with the plan that we're on the sodas wouldn't count against us but if you're on one of the one of the other plans um, if you didn't do it within that the, the allotted time period, that would have been charged against you or charged to your room. So again, they need somebody over there paying attention to what's, what you know what is available and, and you know just customer service. Um, On a positive note, I will say that the ship is very beautiful. It I is. mean, it very is. Nice. What's going on guys? I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video um, so far. Uh, felt like we needed to do a quick recap of day one on the uh, Carnival Mardi Gras. Um, just because you know, we are new to this, um, you know, hopefully you guys will you know, go through the growing pains with us and um, you know, give us some constructive criticism of what we can do better, uh, other things that we can add uh, going forward. But uh, just wanted to do a quick update um, for day one. And I guess uh, really to start off with, uh, I'll say that uh, had a great day, had a great time on, on the Mardi Gras, to be, you know, overall, you know, great time. The, the process of getting on board uh, was, was actually very, very smooth. Um, yeah, it was one of the best experiences we've had with embarkation. So embarkation day is always kind of a little bit stressful, especially right now because of test, you've got all the additional requirements. And so just, you know, you're always fingers crossed until you get on board. Um, and just with, you know, there's usually a little bit of travel that day and and dealing with the luggage and all of that. I mean, it's, pr it's pretty easy, but um, it's still just, it's kind of like a travel day. So it's always a little bit stressful, but I would say that Carnival's system was super quick, very painless. Top notch. Yeah. Sure. It definitely yeah, it was very easy. I mean, I think I said in the video or she said in the video, actually, it was about 15 minutes from getting out of the car to, you know, getting up to the security point. Um, it, it was very quick. I mean, all told, we were on the ship in less than thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it sure. was, it was very good. So you know, of course, um, as you saw in the video, really, um, there we did a lot of other stuff that unfortunately we just didn't record. Kind of remembering to do it. Um, it was a new ship, a new cruise line for us, and so we just got carried away in exploring and learning all the nuances of the ship and the differences. Um, so. There was a lot of that, but so we got on board and of course our stateroom wasn't ready yet. Um, we, they were still cleaning our room and we were able to go and put down a few things and grab our CPAS cards. Um, and we went and had lunch at Pig and Acre. Yep. And we kind of went over that, um, just, you know, to touch on that again, wasn't overly favorite. impressed. The, the pork was all right. The collards were great. 
I know I said that 5,000 times in the video. But anyway, not overly impressed there. Uh, so we did go and try the buffet. Again, not impressed. Um, we may just not be buffet people. <laughs> I will say, yeah, no, I, I'd have to say that on, on really on any of the cruises we've been on. I haven't so, been haven't been particularly impressed with the buffets. So your mi mileage may vary there. Um, food is very subjective. So what one person likes, another person may dislike, and vice versa. So I I I don't think it was horrible and edible. It just wasn't yeah. to our liking. So yeah, um, but yeah, I think uh, I, I definitely think some of the other options. And again, I didn't eat. We didn't do this on day one, but I'll just mention it. Uh, I found like. Um, um, the Cajun uh, place, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Emeralds. Emeralds. Emeralds uh, was phenomenal. So really, the little bit of extra that you pay, I want to say I paid $3 for um, red beans and rice and like 3 or $4 for some jambalaya. Both were phenomenal. So I do think that even though if you're not, if the, the, the buffet's not to your liking, there are other things that will be a little extra money that were totally worth it and for very good food. Our dog. Um, I'm sorry, yes, you'll see Sydney running around. Um, so anyway, and we just explored the ship. We did, you know, went up to the top deck the for um, Sail Away, and it was a good vibe. Party atmosphere, it was a lot of fun. It was kind of a gray day, <laughs> um, rainy day there in Port Canaveral when we left, so um, not the best, you know, for that, but it was, it was still a nice atmosphere, um, a lot of fun. And we had, when we finally got into our cabin, uh, we got to check that out and loved it. I did the unpacking because I have to do that on a long cruise. Um, but yeah, we had, yeah, we had the Havana Cabana cabin, as you'll see in the, as you just saw, and um, loved that. I recommend it even more probably on the Vista because of the placement of the Havana Cabanas in the back, the aft of the ship, which... I prefer um, and I will say that I felt motion in the front of the ship a little bit more on this sailing than I do on have on other ships but I usually choose midship or aft so there's that um, I was I, the, the room I will say I mean yes they were nice uh, they are smaller uh, they seem to be smaller to me than, than uh, some of the other cruise lines we've been on um, the bathroom takes a little uh, maneuvering because uh, it was it, it, it was definitely smaller, but not terrible. Um, right. It was definitely it the was definitely closet doable. was amazing for yeah. a cruise ship closet. Um, rooms are very nice, well appointed. Um, it's of course it's being a newer ship, um, and the whole ship is you know more modern. Um, I can't really complain about the room, especially that balcony was wonderful. Yeah, the balcony um, was very nice. You know, like the room, love the closet storage. I mean, all in all, I would say it was very... Um, so, if you've ever been to Disney World and you've been to Pop Century and you walk into those rooms and you're like, oh my goodness, this room is so small, it's never going to do. But the, the layout. layout of the room and the storage in the room, the little touches in the room... It really makes it so comfortable and easy to do for your trip and I, that's how I felt about this cabin it was really well laid out um, with lots of storage and uh, you know just really well functioning well functioning room so um, after that and I maybe a little more exploring and a few drinks uh, pre-dinner drinks maybe we um, we went to Chebang for dinner yes which Chebang is technically a specialty restaurant on the Mardi Gras, but due to COVID, they there are several of their uh, specialty restaurants that they are not charging an upcharge for, so that they can better spread out the guest um, at di with dining times. So, uh, which is kind of funny because literally we were sat at a two-person table. With another two-person table, no more than three inches from us, there could not have been a gap more Maybe than three six inches. inches. But it was. Very I don't close. think it was six inches, but it was so close. And you, and I mean, was, you could was, not not 
be a part of that person's dinner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we might as well have been sharing a table. It was, it was crazy. Um, but yeah, anyway, so anyway, it was a free, it is free, but it may not always be free. Um, at some point they may change that cause that was the original intention. Um, and Chibang is a Mexican and Asian restaurant, but it is not fusion. So they have literally two kind of two menus. Um, or it's one menu, but they have both, uh, Asian specialties, um, and Mexican specialties, uh, dining. Um, so I went with Mexican, he went with Asian. I did. And you had like a I spicy think it was, Kung Yeah, it was, I want to say it was, was it Kung Pao? I, I don't or, recall. Was it General's? I think it may be no, General's maybe chicken. That, but it was very spicy. It was very spicy. I, I loved it. I love spicy food. Uh, the guy next to me, um, he, he 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 first bite uh, was was getting yeah right up the first bite oh my god that's too spicy um and his actually his wife uh had, it, had as well. it as well and it was and, too spicy and for they her. both were were complaining about it and whatever i loved it um uh, i would definitely suggest that um I'm trying to look at my pictures here so i can remember what i had um i want to say that i had i probably had a quesadilla but i couldn't for sure um again we're gonna get better at this we will get um, better at this yeah we gotta start somewhere um yeah so maybe and, we'll drop that picture in here yeah we're um, gonna be dropping pictures all, all along so you but, don't have to look at us the whole time um but yeah we'll definitely do that um and get it all in order as we're talking but I, I do recall that I either had probably a salad or like a quesadilla something sure like that quesadilla, quesadilla that's my typical so yeah, and I mean, I thought it was good. It wasn't great, but it was good. I I enjoyed mine. I I, I thoroughly did. In fact, we went back and I'm didn't looking I get at it again? dinner. I mean, at dessert because I do have a picture of dessert, and it was a brown, yeah, just like only... a brownie with um, ice cream, um, which is good. It was good. I mean, it was kind of like the you know gooey center, if I remember, like kind of almost like a lava cake, yeah. but not exactly. Um, yeah, so it was good. And I don't recall what I had for uh, for dessert. We'd have to pull up the uh, pull up the menu. I'm gonna go with you. Probably had something like green tea. I don't know, but anyway, anyway, I I was uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, definitely enjoyed it overall. And so then we went and watched some karaoke. I think it was too late for you to sign up that night. Yeah, it was. I didn't do any karaoke on on this cruise. Yeah, but we watched for a little while. And um, there was a piano, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a guitar, female yeah, guitar player. Yeah, I don't player. recall her name. We saw her um, a couple times. Yeah, she was, she was, she was pretty good. Um, pretty good. And she wasn't just, she just was kind of in a afterthought of a place on the ship, yeah. though it seemed like. Literally so it backed into a corner. We put up some pictures. Um, but just, just, just a, backed into a corner. It wasn't like she was in a, a bar, like a, a pub. Um, that, that I mean, she I, was across I, from the bar. Yeah, the but bar. it was still kind but of. But it was just kind of like not a strange. real comfortable place to hang out for yeah. a long time. So, um, but after that, we ended up in the piano bar, which became quickly our favorite place on the show. So um, the the singer, um, the piano shout player, shout out to Eden Parker. Eden, who Eden, just got off the Mardi Gras. I, I've got to say, if you are a music fan, you enjoy going and listening to to singers. His voice is angelic, number one. Number two, he is so talented. Number three, great performer. he's a great performer. Number four, he's a great guy. Um, God, what else can I say? I, I, I really, if, if, if you... He has a are, fan club, for sure. If and you are, are looking to go on a, a, a cruise, I don't know if he'll be back on Carnival or not. Um, if you can... Okay, if you be. can find out who's going to be performing, doing the, the, the piano, um, piano, bar. piano bar, find him. And I, I'm telling you, find a cruise that has him on it. Uh, I love the guy. Just absolutely love the guy. We will definitely be looking for for our next Carnival cruise. Yes, 100%. We will definitely make sure that he's part of it. I mean, of, 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 even though we had a great time overall, oh, he... he made it and it he wasn't did. just him the 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 bartender and the wait staff sasha and, and, natasha. and natasha great just absolutely great that piano bar we cannot remember the name of it um 
I'll look it up. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> we'll put the name right here. I'm telling you, that made the cruise, I think, for both of us. It did Those overall. Three. I mean, there were so many good... I, I want to say that I think there were other aspects of the cruise that we really enjoyed as well. Um, and so there were a lot of good points, but I will say that I think Eden and the piano bar was like a major highlight for us. And I'm sure that for everybody, there, one thing I kept saying um, by the end of this trip was that there is something on board for everyone, very similar to a Royal Caribbean cruise. And I was very concerned that Carnival might not be our scene, that it might just be too much party party by the pool type thing. Um, and that was not the case. You can certainly do that and they do excel at that. Um, but there was something for everyone else too on that ship. Um, so we we're very happy with the cruise overall. Very glad that we got to do it. And I am looking towards sub celebrity, I'm sorry. I'm looking forward to um, Carnival Celebration. Um, I'm eyeing a Southern Caribbean cruise on that. That's the next ship in the Carnival line. And it's a sister ship to Carnival Mardi Gras. Okay. Um, and so I'm hoping we'll get to do that. Um, and then, of course, we ended the night at the pizza place um, yes. where we will end every night of the cruise, Fair sadly. Um, but, yeah, you, you, you got to do the pizza place, I think, at least once, right? Just It's not the best pizza, but it, it fits the bill at that time yeah. of the night. and it was, to be honest with you, <laughs> I, I think drinks. we both kind of felt like it was a little undercooked. Um, Sometimes, some nights. It yeah. depended on the night. But, you know, they are, everybody's up there, you know, you know whatever time it is, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, everybody's up there. Uh, they're busy as heck. They're doing the best they can. So it's pizza. Unless it's Chef Boy RD, you can't go wrong with pizza. So um, yeah, it was it was good. So really, I guess that was more or less the end of day one. Yeah. Um, and uh, can't wait to get into the rest of it. So many great stories. Of course, most of them happen in the piano bar. No, um, we have other stuff I know, too. I know. We but, did other stuff uh, too. The excursions and everything. All that will be coming up. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys um, sticking with us. I hope you'll stick with us. And one of the things that I kept being told I had to do that I kept forgetting to do, so we're going to do it here, be sure to like and subscribe. Hit that button. Help us out. Uh, we're trying to grow and be able to present, uh, get you guys more information. And um, we appreciate your time.